A lot of crazy stuff happening in the PC gaming and hardware market. Nvidia's upcoming a rumored RTX 50 Super Series, which was supposed to be launching in this quarter and then was delayed to CES of 2026, may now be delayed even further. And from what I'm hearing actually from the latest rumors, it could even be canceled altogether. RAM prices are absolutely exploding if you've been shopping around for DDR5 memory and just memory in general. Things have been going crazy, and to an extension of that, now storage prices are also starting to soar. And then I wanted to also briefly talk a little bit about the rumored Bartlett Lake 12p core uh, processor that Intel may be releasing this quarter. So all of that and more to be discussed in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. I just wanted to give you guys my thoughts on the current state of the market when it comes to PC hardware and PC gaming tech. As you guys know that um, things right now are going pretty crazy. Um, so I wanted to start things off by talking about the upcoming RTX 50 Super Series or the anticipated RTX 50 Super Series. I did actually make a video about uh, the 50 Super Series a couple months ago where we discuss things like specifications, pricing, and just the whole aspect of whether or not you should be waiting if you are, you know, in the market for a GPU or if you're looking to do an upgrade. And right now, things have, it looks like things have been delayed because if you guys aren't aware, memory prices, and we're going to get into that, memory prices are just absolutely exploding. And one of the big selling points of this upcoming RTX 50 Super Series, really the own, only mainly appealing thing about them was the fact that for the SKUs, there was going to be a major memory upgrade. So we had the RTX 5080 Super, the RTX 5070 Ti Super, and then the RTX 5070 Super. And when we looked at the specifications for these rumored SKUs the last time, there wasn't really any major changes except for the fact that they, all three SKUs compared to their vanilla counterparts were getting some memory upgrades. And the reason or the whole reasoning behind them for getting memory upgrades is because, you know, it's been a hot topic for the last couple of years where on the NVIDIA side of things, the memory upgrades or the and memory buffers that NVIDIA gives you on the 50 Super Series or the initial series in general hasn't been adequate. And, you know, 12 gigabytes for a mid-range card is, you can think of it as pretty limiting depending on the types of settings that you're using. But people were expecting the RTX 5070 to launch with at least 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And along with that, the 5080 Super and then the 5070 Ti Super to have at least 20 gigabytes of VRAM or more. And so with the SKUs that we looked at, the rumored SKUs, that is, it looks like that's the change that NVIDIA is going to be doing, um, utilizing 3 gigabyte GDDR7 chips. And so when you have a chip like the RTX 5080 Super with its memory controller and its 256-bit bus, it results in... A card that gives you 24 gigabytes of VRAM if they utilize those 3 gig, three gig chips, right? Same thing with the 5070 Ti Super that has 16 gigabytes, so that'll result in 24. And then the RTX 5070 will have 18. So when you look at that, and I forgot to mention that the RTX 5070 does also have a slight upgrade on the CUDA, CUDA core counter shaders, but apart from that, there's really no other major changes. So what I said last time is, honestly, don't expect a huge, huge performance upgrade. Honestly, it's going to be a few percentage points, and that's about it. Nothing really exciting, nothing substantial, nothing that you would really even notice. And honestly, right now, like I just recently tested the RTX 5080 against my RTX 4090, and that card has 24 gigabytes of VRAM. And even at 4K high settings with new modern titles, VRAM wasn't really the main limiting factor. Obviously, when you bring in stuff like super heavy path tracing, then you can start talking about VRAM limitations. But I mean, at that point, the performance was already so low or by the time the performance or memory buffers gets maxed out, you're already going to be looking at doing an upgrade for these graphics cards anyways. So, you know, having 24 gigabytes of VRAM on paper, sure, that sounds nice and maybe a little bit reassuring at, at the beginning, but you got to ask yourself, are you even utilizing that? Are you coming anywhere close to doing that? If you are, then yeah, sure, maybe it might be worth it. But for the most, for the vast majority of consumers, you know, utilize reasonable settings. Don't worry about maxing every single thing out. And everything still looks really great on just a high preset. And you won't have any problems with VRAM. Um, but apart from that, really, yeah, no major changes in terms of performance. 
Um, the other thing too was obviously pricing, right? So if the 5080 Super with its 24 gigabytes of VRAM came out and it was the same MSRP as the original vanilla 5080, then yeah, I mean, sure, it looks pretty appealing. Um, but now that we have this shortage in memory because all these AI farms and big AI companies, data center, commercial companies are all pretty much uh, utilizing more and more uh, chips and trying to build more systems, which is thus increasing that demand for uh, DDR7, just DRAM in general, which is an extension, um, is affecting GDDR7. And GDDR7 3 gig modules are still pretty rare and highly sought after, especially for these big AI companies, right? So that is what was supposed to be utilized for the 50 Super Series. And if there's going to be a severe shortage on that, then that's going to delay NVIDIA's plans on releasing the series. And if you recall the initial rumors, they were stating that by late Q4 of 2025 or in the middle of Q4 2025 is when we would be seeing a refresh of the 50 series and then that got delayed to CES of 2026 and now the latest rumors are stating that it's been it's slipped to Q3 of 2026 which I mean at that point why even bother because you're basically going to be nearing the two-year mark since the 50 series would have released right and usually Nvidia is doing this like two 2.5 year cycle between their generation um, so, I mean, if it's Q3 2026, by the time we see a 5080 Super or 5070 Ti Super, people are just going to be like, screw that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not buying this. I'm just going to wait for the 60 series. And I mean, obviously we can get into that conversation of there's always going to be something new around the corner, but at that point, like if you're going to be in the market and you're going to be looking for an upgrade or projecting to be looking for an upgrade at that point, I would just honestly, yeah, wait for the 60 series and then try to buy one of those cards day one. Um, and I mean, who knows what the performance upgrades will look like on that. Uh, but I, I personally wouldn't buy a 50 car, 50 series card that late into the release cycle or life cycle. Um, and then that's the other thing too, right? Because people always talk about, should I wait? Should I not wait? I'm seeing so many of these questions on various forum boards on my com on my video, on my videos, people are commenting, should I wait for the 5080 super? And my advice would be, if you see a good deal now, then just go for it, right? You know, we're in the Black Friday and holiday season. There's going to be some deals popping up. So if you see something that you really like, I'd say go for it. Um, like I've seen 5080s dropping down to 899. And I've been told even like on the used market, they've been dropping down below that or open box has been dropping below that. And like I showed in my last video, if you can tune this card, you can basically get a 4090 for less than 900 bucks potentially. So that I think is an impeccable deal if you can find you know if you can find a gem like that but you know even 5070 ti's they've been falling below msrp on the amd side uh, i've seen 9070 xt's dropping below M msrp too so things on the gpu side of uh, on the gpu side of the market have been pretty stellar if you if you think about it right um and that sucks because now when we get into memory so we'll talk about that memory prices have just exploded exploded and like this isn't even like a growing pain that was prolonged over a few months like this was just literally within the last within the last month or so where memory prices just went absolutely crazy because I remember even seeing in like late August or late September DDR5 you know your typical DDR5 6000 CL30 memory kit that's recommended by everyone that was going for like you know 100 to 120 bucks or so US and now those kits are selling for like 200 to 250 dollars here in Canada a 6000 CL30 kit is going for like $300 plus, if not even more than that. And you know, if you're on the Intel side of things, I'm always urging you guys go for the highest memory kit that you can get. Um, if you're on the uh, 800 series motherboard, so if you're on Arrow Lake, really good memory controller. I can I did on my first try 8600 mega transfer is easy and you can even do up to 9000 if you're doing that. But And that really brings that chip to life. Um, so, and those, and I mean, those kits, crazy expensive right now, crazy expensive. So yeah, it just, it's a, it's a shitty situation when you think about it, because now when GPU prices were starting to get better and we were starting to see these decent deals come up, parts being under MSRP, all of a sudden memory prices just go crazy. And then to an extension of that, now we're starting to see storage prices are also creeping up as well, right? So, you know, your one terabyte, two terabyte NVMe drives, um, with a DRAM on it, especially with the DRAM on it, those things are starting to soar as well. 
um, they're going crazy too. So it, it's, it's like the PC gaming and PC hardware market just can't catch a break. And it, there's always something that comes up. And honestly, this whole AI AI situation with you know these big companies, AI farms and commercial enterprises, whether you want to call it a bubble, I don't know. Like I, I'm not an expert in this thing. I don't claim to be an expert, but we don't know when when this whole situation is going to settle down. It could get even worse. So you customer customers are going to start facing this dilemma where you know if you are in the market, if you desperately need uh, a system, and you're going to be building a system with DDR5, try to see what you can snag right now for the lowest possible price. Obviously, don't go for the absolute worst thing, right? Don't don't cripple your chip like that. But you want something still half decent, then maybe it's worth just you know, it would be a hard pill to swallow, but just do it because you don't know. Maybe things can get even worse in the future. I'm hoping things calm down. And if this is a bubble, hopefully it bursts and everything falls back down to earth. But yeah, it's a shitty, shitty situation overall. And I, I, I don't know. Like I've been doing some reading about the situation and it looks like everyone is obviously just making estimations and projecting as to how how, how far and high prices can go. And nobody really has a clear answer as to when things will slow down or come back down to earth. It all really just comes down to um, when this AI demand is going to slow down, when that bubble will burst, um, and then we'll have to take it from there. But uh, moving on to the next topic I just wanted to briefly talk about, and that was um, the rumored Intel Bartlett Lake 12 P-Core processor. So if you're not aware, Bartlett Lake is another microarchitecture that Intel has alongside you know, Arrow Lake and uh, Raptor Lake. And Bartlett Lake is actually f- going to be on the LGA 1700 platform. So the same motherboard, same socket that the 13th and 14th generation CPUs were on. And I mean, it's actually not like a new microarchitecture. It's really just a rebrand of Raptor Lake. And from what I've been hearing, it's mainly going to be targeted targeted towards consu- the professional and the enterprise market or the, the data center market. So we might not even see anything for the consumer side of things, which would suck because I am, well, the only SKU I was actually interested in was the 12P core part. Uh, the rest of them don't really interest me much because it's just rehashing uh, 14th generation. But the 12P core part is certainly interesting because when you have discussions about Raptor Lake and Intel's best gaming CPU. There's a lot of debate amongst uh, PC gamers and hardware enthusiasts that, you know, the e-cores on Raptor Lake are useless for gaming and they slow the processor down and um, you're you're better off just turning them off and trying to just clock your P-cores as high as possible. I don't know. I from what my what I've done and from my own testing, I've found it can be a mix of things. Like some games actually can utilize e cores and actually yield better performance, and some games prefer just one one architecture to be active. So that's just your p cores being active. So I don't know. For my testing, I've I've seen a mix of things, and I'm I'm, I'm thinking about doing a revisit because it's a really fun and interesting topic. I always like tinkering around and seeing how these newer different engines. Uh, behave once you bring in a mixed architecture processor with you know p cores and e cores on on aero lake i was pretty impressed by the e cores they're actually quite a bit better than the raptor lake e cores they clock high too you, depending on your sample i've seen people clock them as high as 5.2 and 5.1 gigahertz but um because on aero lake you don't have hyper threading it's just the p cores and then you have the 16 e cores so on the mac on the top skew like the 285 kids 24 cores and it's fine right but on a 14900K, you have a 24 core part, so 8 P cores with 16 E cores and then hyper threading on the P cores, right? And a lot of um, enthusiasts suggest that you should just turn off your E cores. And I've also seen people suggest that the behavior can also vary if you're using Windows 10, because on Windows 10, the E cores don't behave correctly, whereas on Windows 11, they are utilized correctly. Something else I need to test, so I don't know for sure. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting because. With 12 P cores, it does eliminate that whole discussion entirely. And then it gives that consumer the peace of mind or that gamer the peace of mind that I don't have to deal with a hybridized architecture. If my E cores are slowing my slowing down the performance of this specific game or not, it'll just work out of the box. And, um, you know, it's just 12 P cores that I, I can tune or do whatever with. Now, speaking of tuning, from what I've been hearing, this is actually going to be a locked skew. Hence why I'm saying that it's probably only going to be coming out for the, cons- uh, the professional segment or the enterprise, whatever. Because if you think about it, it'd be kind of weird too for Intel to be releasing 
an LGA 1700 product when that platform is already like, what, three, four years old, old at this point, right? And then they're going to be doing an Arrow Lake refresh. So they're going to be releasing 300 series SKUs of processors. So it's going to create a little bit of a messy situation. I think, honestly, they should just release that 12P core part and then maybe just a couple of other SKUs. They shouldn't release a whole stack of SKUs, but, you know, we'll see. If they do, they do definitely release that 12P core part, going to try my best to get my hands on it because it'll be just something fun to tinker around with. And, you know, do some comparisons against a 14900K with E-Cores on or off. And obviously, I got to throw in that 9800X 3D into the mix and see how things go from there. But yeah, I mean, if they do release it, it'll be fun and exciting. Something to play around with in the CPU side of things, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, that's all I have for you guys for this video. Just a few things I wanted to get my thoughts about. Um, hopefully, the whole situation around the RAM comes down to earth. If you're looking for a new graphics card, great deals to hop on right now from what I'm seeing. And yeah, for Intel, hopefully they give us that 12P core part for gamers, something that we can get a little bit more excited about considering Arrow Lake was kind of a flop. But um, yeah, that'll do it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this rant or this thoughts, uh, offloading of thoughts. And uh, yeah, we'll touch base in the next video. Take care. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.